excited to welcome you on safari with us. It's just past 11 o'clock at night. We're in Kenya in the Maasai Mara, and there is a lioness in this long grass in front of us. She's so difficult to see. She's blending in so well. And she's creeping up on this herd of topi. There's another lioness that moved off to the right of her. So there's two lioness in total, one of which is, I'm guessing, somewhere to the right of the topi that you can see on the right-hand side of your screen. And the other one is somewhere just on the left-hand edge of the frame at the moment. We had just poured ourselves a cup of coffee when the lions picked their head up. They'd been sleeping for about half an hour. And all of a sudden they had heard these topi moving through the long grass. And now they've started to try and stalk them. You can see the topi are very nervous. It's a windy evening. And my name's Scott. Jandre is on camera. The topi have sent something. Uh oh, this isn't looking good for the lion. Maybe that lioness over there gave them away. You can see the initial lioness. She wasn't far from them, but too far to make a charge. Zoom out, please, Jandre. Um, long gone. And even in these very, very favorable conditions for lions hunting, they had perfect cover. The wind was blowing directly towards them, muffling the sound of their ascent, or their approach, rather. And they blew it. <laughs> Anyway, we can pour ourselves another cup of coffee now. We threw it all out overboard as we had to follow them a little bit closer to, to catch up to them to be, be, make sure we could actually film them. Interestingly, as you can see, it'll be pitch black around us. We may have noticed that it was pitch black behind me, but we're filming in an infrared camera, which allows us to partake in these hunts without interfering. It seems like she's still interested, but she's going to have a work cut out for her. Hello to Sandy. You're interested to know if these are the same lions that Brent was with a little bit earlier. And no, um, this is a different pride of lions. These are two lionesses from the Angama pride. We actually started the evening with just one of them. And she tried to catch some zebra. She was also just sleeping and some zebra stumbled upon her. She tried to catch one. She got close and then we lost her in the long grass as she continued to chase them. And we bumped into these two lionesses afterwards, or this one and her friend who we've yet, yet to see. And they led us to their seven cubs, about six months of age roughly. They lay down for about half an hour after a bit of playtime, and then these two got up and crossed a big swamp, which we drove around, and we managed to relocate them where basically where we found them now. And like I said, they'd only been asleep for about half an hour when these topies stumbled upon them. The lioness are hungry. We could well be going live again a little bit later on Facebook if this pride comes into contact with any more with any more prey. I'm just going to use my flashlight quickly for a quick scan around. There is actually some topi just in front of her. It's deceptive with the infrared. If you should aim to the left, please, Andre, where the topi should be a bit more. Keep, keep scanning to the left. There's definitely something in front of her. So keep scanning ahead to the left of her, please, until, you, until you're at the end of your range. There they are. So this is the same herd of topi. They've moved off quite a way. Now, I'm wonder, wondering if they weren't just a little bit cautious and got a bit spooked by something, but weren't entirely sure what it was that spooked them. But she's still definitely on the hunt. Now, we're going to need to try and keep in the action somehow. I wonder where this other lioness has gone. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and very slowly 
drive in the dark through this big open clearing just using the infrared that way we won't be interfering and I can kind of see where I'm going from the way Jandre is pointing the camera now he's using the top of my head as a reference so that I know where my head is and therefore I know what's kind of in front of me and as long as we move slowly like this it should be okay Good evening, Tusha here. You would like to know how fast can topies run? Well, very, very quickly. In the terms of kind of meters per second, an average lion can move at about 20 to 25 meters a second for a short burst. And most antelopes will be able to match that, if not be actually faster. The predators actually re rely on the, the, the ambush and the elements of surprise to be able to catch their prey. If they don't have that, they very often fail. And this evening was a good example of that. This lioness was about 40 meters away from the lions, uh, from the topies, simply too far away. And she, wasn't, she didn't even get close. So they move very, very quickly. Most animals out here, show here, can move at incredible speeds, even the ones you wouldn't expect to, like elephants and hippos. When you look at their anatomies, you wouldn't think that they can actually... will be able to all humans on the planet including the lines have got one the lines have got one Now we're not going to be interfering in the hunt anymore because it sounds like one's been taken down. Hold on everyone, it's a bit bumpy. Now, I'm just trying to go on what I was hearing and it's somewhere up ahead here. I may have to switch off and listen again or use my spotlight to look for the other lioness which is going to be running in. Una semanini bona? Mbele. Oh, there we go. Straight in front of us below the street. Hold on, I've got to make sure we don't go down any big holes here or into any big termite mounds. But we do want to try and get you there as quickly as possible. Well, it seems like the other lioness must have looped right around and they've managed to bring down a topi. Oh, all still on board. Just gonna get into position. Here we go. No, the topi isn't dead yet. The one lioness, as you can see, is still suffocating it. And this may take a while. For any of the sensitive viewers, this may happen a, a little bit slower than you would like it to. But this is nature, and these lioness were desperate for a meal, as are their seven cubs. I'm told a lot of you guys have already sent through your thoughts and that you're very happy that these lioness have had success and that their cubs too will be able to join in on this feast. Now what we... The third lioness has already made it here. Now I'm wondering if the third lioness, the missing lioness that we were actually with earlier tonight didn't actively co uh, contribute to this hunt. I actually think she's the individual in the middle if I'm not mistaken, one of them has got a very distinctive mark on the right hand side of their face, which will work out in a little while. Unless she just heard the commotion and came running in. Now this is something to bear in mind. That we heard the commotion, and if my poor hearing can hear it, hyenas from far and wide, possibly other lions would have heard it. So we could expect some hyenas on the scene here. It probably won't take too long, actually, for them to come charging in. Now, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with regards to the cubs. Some of the cubs are certainly big enough to start feeding on meat. They're about six months old. 
and they'll f start feeding on meat from as young as about three months of age. So I'm, I'm wondering if those cubs would have heard the noise and come running. It would be a bit risky for them to travel all the distance from where they were left, about a kilometer from here, I would guess. Um, but who knows, they may come trundling in. One, of, one or two of these lionesses may have a snack and go across the swamp to call the cubs back here. Hello to just Romy. You say that you don't think it seems like it's going to be enough food for all of them. A topi is a large animal, and it'll give these these three lioness a very substantial meal. So, you know, the, the topi probably weighs about 120 kilograms. So 40 kilograms each, of course, that's not all meat. There's a bit of bone in there, but let's say it's 20 kilograms of meat. It's still a very large chunk of meat for dinner. So they are going to be well gorged after this. Although, to be honest, they haven't got a very good look at the topi and the size thereof. So, and, and now that you say that, I don't think it is the biggest of topis, but a big topi would give them a good meal. And this, even not the biggest of topis, is certainly going to provide them with a very good meal and enough sustenance to keep them going for a couple of days. It's fascinating how you can actually hear them ripping through this flesh. And Anne would like to know if they use their front teeth to pull, up, pull off the fur and the hide. And usually they'll use their, their carnations, the teeth at the back of their mouth, to cut like scissors through the hide as opposed to using their front teeth. They'll usually, from what I've seen, use their front teeth to pluck... All the cubs have come running in. I can't believe it. <coughs> they didn't need to get called. They just heard the commotion and knew that, that it was time to come and feed. And there's seven of them that would have come flying in there. And now you're going to start hearing a lot more squabbling and complaining and moaning and jostling for the right place in the carcass and Jerry was just wondering why there wasn't more squabbling happening so it's because there was enough space for these three lioness to all have their share. Now that the cubs have come flying in things could heat up a bit and it's not uncommon for even cubs and mothers to snarl at one another. It wasn't long ago that Jamie actually saw one of these cubs get its claws stuck in its mother's or its aunt's nose which put her in a serious predicament. And you can just see how much these cubs needed this meal. They came charging in. And aren't we so lucky to be viewing this in pitch darkness, just about in the middle of the night, in the Masai Mara. And it's a great pleasure to have you all with us. I'm very, very glad you guys have all got the notifications and updates that we were going live on Facebook. It was a state of pandemonium on our vehicle. We had just literally poured ourselves cups of coffee. We hadn't even had a sip of them. Lions put their heads up. Topies were in the background. Coffee got thrown over our shoulders. And next thing we knew, we were on the hunts. And I was just saying minutes before they took down this... Uh, Topi that their strike rate usually well you know it, it just simply isn't great and we've already spent a lot of time out with these animals since we've been here on attempted hunts but yet to see many successful takedowns so I'm very very happy for this pride to see that they have successfully managed to bring down a meal earlier on Facebook Brent went live a lioness well I think three lioness missed a zebra then and who knows there may be a lot more hunts happening tonight Jamie's in another part of the Masai Mara she's on in the National Reserve so she's on the western side, oh sorry, the eastern side of the Mara River. Brent's heading further south of where I am here. So we've got all our bases covered, and there's certainly good prospects for a lot more action like this later.
Hello to Maritza. You're interesting, interested to know if there's any hyenas wafting about, and not that I am aware of. However, I'm just going to turn on my little thermal imaging pirate telescope for nocturnal pirating, and <laughs> it's basically an awesome tool which allows us to pick up any warm objects. So obviously I've just gone past the line, well I went past the lines now and they were all glowing, but I've just done a 360 degree view and there appears to be nothing approaching. So for now no hyena, but I would be very, very surprised if some hyena don't make it onto the scene before these lines are done. I really, really would. Having said that, though, I haven't spent too much time in this specific part of the Masai Mara. I've been a little bit further south of here where there's huge, huge hyena populations, hundreds of clans of about a hundred or so in just one clan. So huge hyena populations do exist in the Mara, but I'm not too sure how many are in this exact area that I'm in now. We're quite close to camp, and this is an area where Jamie's been spending a lot of time, especially with this pride of lions. And I do know that Jamie did have a run-in where some hyenas came dangerously close to the cubs one night, so let's hope that doesn't happen again this evening. Good evening, Megan. You are wondering whether there's any difference between the strike rate of lions here compared to the prides in Juma with regards to their hunting capabilities. And I would guess that it's fairly similar in normal scenarios. Of course, the lions of the Masai Mara have got a very fortunate event, the migration, which allows them the easiest of opportunities for hunting. It, it's it's, far, it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous how easy it is for them because there are just so, so, so many wildebeest, zebra, Thompson's gazelle. And in the chaos and confusion, even the topis and eland and other animals may become unstuck because there's just so much going on that it's difficult to know where the predators are. There's so many hooves trundling over crossings through bushes, through these big grassy plains that as a predator you can just lie down and something's basically going to trip over you eventually. Oh, things are heating up here. So I think, you know, during the next three months, these lions, their strike rate is going to spike drastically in terms of the amount of takedowns per attempt. They'll take down so much prey that they won't even be able to eat. They'll just leave it for the vultures. But it's their muscle memory, it's their instinct to take these opportunities when they are provided to them. So they'll continue to take opportunity time and time again until there's a mountain of wildebeest behind them. It obviously doesn't get that drastic and it's a bounty that all of them need because when all of these animals move out of the Mara then it becomes tougher times for them and kind of more Juma-like you could say hunting conditions and in those scenarios I would you know I would guess it's fairly similar you'll get some prides that are more successful than others but we haven't followed any prides closely enough to be able to work out those kinds of stats. Having said that, now with infrared thermal imaging and our new playground in the Masai Mara where we get to explore all night, which is when lions do the majority of their hunting, maybe we will be able to start working out these statistics and working out which prides of lion are more successful than others. Well, looks like the fine cuts have already been dealt with and now it's just the bones and the scraps that they're getting to. It's fascinating how quickly they can work their way through so much meat. Oh, hello Robin. Sorry to hear you missed the action. Um, to be honest, we didn't see the takedown, but they did manage to bring down a topi of about a, of a medium size. It wasn't a huge topi. It looked, you know, medium size, but hard to hard to be sure. We've had all the lights off other than we, when, when we raced up here. We, we saw them kind of stalking the topi, and initially they drifted off, and then the lions managed to kind of encompass them. Another lioness popped up out of, out of nowhere. She wasn't here initially, and I think all three of them kind of honed in on this herd of topi, successfully managing to bring down one. That was probably no more than 
12 minutes ago, maybe 15 minutes ago, very, very recently, but these lions were very hungry. There's three lioness and seven about six-month-old cubs in that pile of lions, and they were all looking forward to this meal. Interestingly, the cubs were about a kilometer away when their mothers left them to go hunting, and they heard the commotion, just like we did, which was what led us to them here. And these cubs came flying in a few minutes after the lioness had successfully brought down this topi. So a great evening for the Angama pride, or at least three lioness and seven of the, the, the medium-sized cubs from within that pride. There's still one lioness missing and six smaller cubs. So a pride of four lioness and 13 little cubs, six of which are small and seven of, of which are quite quite big, well, not big, but medium-sized, which are the ones we're looking at now. Hello, Jessica. You're interested to know how long this meal will sustain these lions for. Good question. Um, that's going to be a tricky one to answer because each one will be able to, you know, through luck, be in a good part of the carcass to get a lot of the easy meat, so may have ingested a lot more than others. Some of the young male cubs may eat more than the f young female cubs because they're bigger and stronger, so they can muscle them out of the way. But I would say a meal like this between these 11 lion that we, 10 lion that we're looking at, will very, very easily satisfy them for 24 hours, if not 48, before they're really going to start think getting desperate for their next meal. So it'll, it'll sustain them. Now I'm interested to see how aggressive they get. You can hear the, the, the intensity of the growls is beginning to pick up now because it's becoming less and less to chew on, which is creating more and more competition. So I'm interested to see who gets what portion of the carcass. It will all be torn up at some point. There we go. We can expect more of that. Okay, everyone, well, it's been wonderful to have you guys with us on this exciting midnight hunt. It's approaching Kenya and the Maasai Mara. Jandre, well done on filming. We took a bit of a gamble. The, the, the lioness was kind of getting towards the end of, of, of our range. So when we were moving forward,